Shabbat Shalom, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of Torah Gems. I'm Rob, your host. This week we're discussing Pekade Vayakhel. Uh, we're reading out of Exodus, out of uh, Kings this week, and we're reading out of Mark, and there's something out of Hebrews that I would like to share that is very uh, pertinent for this particular week's portion. Um, this week, uh, in Exodus, we see the completion of the mobile moving tabernacle, and God comes to rest in, in their midst in a thick cloud. Uh, we see in Kings uh, the completion of Solomon's temple, and of course, in Mark, we see the completion of Christ's work on the cross. Very exciting stuff, uh, all of the Torah pointing to Christ. Now, over the years, we've had many, many people teach us that, you know, the Torah is done away with, and we don't need to keep the commandments, statutes, and judgments of God. Um, an argument that defeats itself. But this week, I don't want to get into that. Uh, there's all kinds of rich imagery in this week's Torah portion with uh, the sockets and the silver and the redemption and all that kind of stuff, but I'm not going to get into that this week. What I wanted to get into this week is this, this, this week specifically is a challenge. I was discussing with someone Lent this week, and I was mortified to note that more and more Christians seem to be celebrating the, the, the uh, tradition of Lent. And it's funny because, you know, uh, the anti-Semitic tradition of, of, of pointing the finger at the Jews in their tradition uh, and, and, and we've adopted our own. It's funny, you know. Um, the Bible talks about legalism. It talks about it in Galatians. Legalism is not anything to do with the commandments, statutes, and judgments of God other than the legalistic keeping of them to attain salvation. No, legalism is the keeping of man's traditions versus the traditions of God. Jesus rebuked the Pharisees and, and didn't call them bad people, by the way. He said that they forsook the commandments for the traditions of men. And we have to always check ourselves and check our hearts at the door. Are we forsaking the commandment of God for the traditions of men? This week is a challenge. And I would challenge anybody who's a Torah observing Christian, Messianic, whatever you want to call yourself, to forward this video to 10 friends who are believers in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob through Jesus Christ, his son, God in the flesh. Uh, and the reason for that is that this is a challenge. I don't challenge any of my Christian brothers and sisters with this because I think you should follow what I believe. We are going to heaven. We're saved. We believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins, and we are saved. We confess him as our Lord and Savior. We are saved. This is not, you don't have to do any of this. You get to. My challenge is, what does God endorse? Does God endorse things that we make, or does God endorse things that he makes? The feasts of God are just that. They're not the feasts of the Jews. They're not the feasts of Judah. They're not the feasts of Ephraim. They're not the feasts of Israel. They're the feasts of God. And the people of God are commanded to keep them as perpetual statutes throughout our generations. As we are grafted in, we come into a realization of the seven feasts of God. And we come into a realization of the, the, the covenants of God and, and how they are our inheritance and that they are life for us. This week, I'm seeing this thing of Lent. A cursory examination of Lent can show that it finds itself as part of the Spring Equinox Festival uh, uh, of, the, of, the, of Semiramis, a Babylonian god who uh, birthed uh, Tammuz and, uh, you know, and, and all of these kinds of things. You know, you, you don't, I'm not going to go into a big teaching about the pagan origins of Easter. Anybody who wants to research it can research it out. I'm going to put a few images at the end of this video to challenge your mind on things that God endorses, and things that he doesn't. Does God endorse Lent and Easter? Things that we made up because the pagan practices in the land were so powerful that we just amalgamated them with Christianity? What does God think about mixing? I would challenge you to read Revelation and see what lukewarm really means. I don't think that God would endorse this at all. Now, if you don't know about it, that's fine. But you know what? Many of us continue to go through life in the church. Oh, well, you know, but this is how I celebrate it. Well. My next challenge is to go through your Bible and find everywhere that it says, did what was right in their own eyes. I did an interesting study recently where I looked at the statement and everyone was doing what was right in their own eyes. Every single time it says that in, in the quote-unquote Old Testament or whatever, or whatever you want to call it, the Tanakh, the, you know, the, the Torah, everywhere that it says, did what was right in their own eyes, precedes an exile and a judgment. Okay? People think judgment these days, they're in a Greco-Roman mindset. They think, oh, if I'm judged, it means I'm going to hell. Not necessarily. And here's, one, here's my challenge. How's it working for you, brothers and sisters? How's the system working for you? How's the, how are pagan festivals of Christmas and Easter and saying that all we need is Jesus working for you? Because you know what? 
I agree with you on the one statement. All we need is Jesus. But why is there a 50% divorce rate in the church? Why are there huge astronomical high levels of, of cervical cancer? Why are our teens and youth becoming involved in drug addiction? And I know because I went through the Teen Challenge program and more than 80% of the people come in there come from a Christian background. So don't tell me that we are somehow winning for Jesus because we're not. We're failing. We are, we're falling flat on our face. We are doing something wrong. And what we're doing wrong is we're glossing over the Mosaic Covenant. The Mosaic Covenant was never designed to bring us to to salvation ever, 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 ever. Anything that uh, is observing that is, is legalism and it's to be chucked in the fire. The Mosaic Covenant is about blessings. It's about blessings and cursings, okay? We don't eat certain foods because they're not food, okay? Jesus didn't declare those foods clean because he's talking about food. And if he's talking about food in a Hebrew camp, he's talking about what is on the list because if Jesus is God in the flesh, he cannot stand against himself or he is not God in the flesh. So, what I'm saying here is, is that we're in this time of Lent. And I hear some Christians everywhere are trying to go deeper with God by observing Lent. And you know what? God bless you. If you want to celebrate the, 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 the resurrection of Jesus, I'm not, I'm not against that. And, and, and I, I mean, I'm against the root of it. But would God endorse this behavior? My challenge to you is if you've read this thing, he wouldn't. He doesn't. He never does. I saw it argued on a site where I was doing some research where they said, yeah, but these are the symbols, but it, it's still okay because it's rooted in, 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 in what, you know, in, in, in the re resurrection of Jesus. So let me get this straight. You completely replace all the feasts of God, you, the, your inheritance, the thing that's going to point you to when you're in the last days and point you to Christ's return, and you're going you're gonna to say that, oh, well, it's okay because we're doing this. You know what? One day you're going to become in front of Christ Jesus. And you know what? I say this because I love you. I say this because I love the church. I'm a member of the ecclesia. I love you people. I would do I would give my life. Okay? This isn't a popular teaching. If I want to be popular and to tickle people's ears, I preach on something fluffy. The fact of the matter is um, what I'm teaching on here is correction. Okay? Paul sent letters of correction to the Galatians, not because he was telling them they weren't under the law. What a load of hooey. A, a cursory word study of that will see a hundred holes in that, in that theory. That's not what Galatians is about. Galatians is people were trying to use the Torah for salvation. No. We've glossed over our covenant people and we're hitting the wall here. And the evidence is in what, what's happening in our churches. People leaving, divorce rates, kids on drugs. Give me a break. Kids surfing porn on the internet. Oh, well, we're not under the law. Praise God. We can just go to Jesus and we can ask forgiveness. And you can. But you know what? There comes a point at which God withdraws his blessing from a situation. And I'm living proof of that. And I'm sure that there's nobody out there that would disagree with me. So he is restoring his people. He's restoring those who are grafted in. And he's restoring the whole house of Israel. And he's doing it. He's bringing to life his Torah. His teaching and instruction. His guidance and deliverance. Not his laws. That's not how it translates. My point, people, is... How can we be walking in a situation like this and completely and totally reject truth when it comes to our door? Because you know what? As it's, it's the Sabbath right now, one of God's appointed times, I move because you know what? You know what's coming up? It's the Passover. If you read the story of the Passover, you can, you can see that Jesus was keeping the Passover. Okay? He rose as a first fruits offering in the Feast of First Fruits. Okay? He came to live inside of us on Shavuot or Pentecost. In the upper room, the, where the mikvah pools were in the temple, where everyone was gathered, keeping the feast. They kept the feast after Yeshua died and rose from the dead. Okay? Here's the thing. We need to walk in truth. We need to walk in life. We, do we love the Lord our God with our heart, soul, mind, and strength? That's my challenge to you today. Shabbat Shalom, everyone, and Shavuot. Hear, O Israel, all your chosen ones, the Lord.